All right, hello everybody, it is Ike Ranerite, and here we are back with another episode of Let's Play Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Uh, I was thinking about maybe we could go do the um, legendary ships, but then I was like, you know, we, so we haven't been to the story for a little bit. Let's go do some more storyline stuff, because we still even have everything unlocked. Like, we don't have the rope dart or anything. So let's go do that. We don't even have all the areas unlocked. So we're going to go on with storyline today. That is the decision. Alright, so we're just going to get over here to the mission. Looks like it's this little ship here. What the hell's happened here? Were you attacked? Other way round. It were Blackbeard who struck first. Opened fire on a British man of war, the pillock. What in God's name for? Still searching for medicines. But he's gone for me, if you ask me. I'll bring him home. Leave him, man. He's heaped this trouble on himself. All right, so Blackbeard's gone on the warpath. Give me some speed! <laughs> that is a frigate. We need to rescue five survivors, okay? If we find some on the map, we'll pick them up. Captain, there's a wreck yonder. Looks recent. I see it. Let's hope Thatch hasn't come to the same end. Another bit of wreckage, Captain. This is looking grim. Aye. Keep your eyes peeled. Blast. This is getting well out of hand. A dozen crates of medicine should not be so hard to come back. Do we need to stay out of combat or anything? Doesn't say so. It's Thatch and Hornigold. It's pointless for you to that. How do you feel? I do. I. But both men have their hearts in a good place. Both want the best for the people of Nassau. But is that the best course for us? Oh, there's land here. We're not men made to govern. We take, we spend, and live harder wherever we go. What solution would you propose? The answer's in wealth, power, not power. We found the observatory. We'd see enough money to buy the whole thing. Or it might be to rule over these kings and emperors like they was passing for themselves. A lot of large talk, Captain. But is it your crew you sail for, or yourself? I mean the best for these men, are they? This don't sit right. Like Freaking running errands, not living right now. All right, that should be the five survivors we need. Get 
out of view of this one. That's Blackbeard's ship. Addy, see that? It's her captain, the Queen Anne's Revenge. And she's in a bad way. No time for a boat. Thatch is outnumbered. The crew will understand. Beat the quarters, lads! We're sailing into hell! Thumbsail's in! Keys off the wind! She's overwhelmed. Going ashore. Kill guards stunned by smoke bombs. Oh god! Some aid here! Hang in there, boy! Now we're on the Queen Anne's Revenge. We need to get up to... This man of war. is not near as good as mine. Thatch. Got better broadsides than I do. I'll give him that. Start blasting. <laughs> I'm not a man accustomed to murder, Captain. Have you taken quarter? You're not 
got me sleeping now. Sack of muzzle, gobshite. You'll be hanged and sun-dried, just as them there were in Boston. The king's called for a part. <laughs> Captain, we've searched the hold. It's a middle intake. But the medicine we found bears a Charles Town stamp. Thank you, Mr. Hans. We cannot resupply Nassau out here by force and accident alone. We should go to Charlestown for the lot. Hello! Uh, are we victorious? I fear I am not built for the fatigue and care required to live as a man of fortune. Meet me in Charlestown. One month from today. All day. here. Not run out of me. I remember this is the mission that everybody always complains about in this game. Hey, old bonnet! Flying your own flag at last! Yes! Yes, Blackbeard cut me loose, sadly. Time to have a go at this myself. Well, that's grand. Yes, it's for the best, I think. I should have some wild stories when next we meet. Edward! Your constant friendship has been my most treasured find on these seas. Well above gold and silver and rum, I, I prize the courage you have inspired in me this year. Thank you, sir. A fair good borrow to you. Mm hmm For your wives, families, and countrymen. How else to explain your government's complete disinterest in your well-being? Hostages for nonsense. These were my only terms. It's a bad word. So I must conclude that you men are the pariahs of Charlestown, and I would profit better by using your organs for chum and your bones for cha. By Christ! This is my predicament. Kill ya. Or to press you into my servant. It's a decision I'll make hardly, but not with remorse. Ahoy, Edward. What the hell are you doing, man? All of Charleston can see this mess. It's the idea. Out of range, but well in sight. So where's the medicine? We sent a party ashore to partner with the governor. That were a week ago. No noise, he says. 
I'll handle it. Give me a day. Uh huh. There's movement up ahead. Is it soldiers? I am in something of a hurry. I propose we follow. Else they spread. Ebony. We see a tail the gunboat right now, okay. What's your thinking? Blackbeard's been out this eight days already. So it's a good bet. Someone out there has prepared the medicine. Just in case. Ah, but they're stalling. Thinking of ways to avoid paying it out. Aye, so let's find where they've gathered and hope for the best. So we just gotta keep an eye on the uh, mini map. And make sure we stay out of the detection circles. a few favors. Alright, we need to sabotage the bell. All right, we need to use sleep darts or crocodiles and skin a crocodile. 
Alright, so that should take care of part of that. There was another crocodile there, but I don't think that's worth it. I'm really having some issues here falling behind. They, they they should have saw me there. Like, there was no way they shouldn't have. Alright, that should take care of the... Alright, so we just keep taking guys out and tailing. Or oh, we need to eavesdrop on the conversation. I apologize. There was an accident. Private Simon! It's crocodile! I don't care about your accidents. What's the word from the harbor soldier? Speak. No change, sir. They're holding fast, but are yet to kill Pull up. the captives. Near as we can tell. Perhaps it's time to to surrender. To surrender. I've been entrusted with the affairs of the town, and I do not intend to bow to the demands of a pirate, no matter how fierce his reputation. Yes, sir. As long as the supply key is with me, no man shall touch that medicine. May plague and calamity strike you. Bloody idiot. What? Pirates! The ship's here! Pirates! Fall back to the mansion! This won't last long. We don't care about anybody else, we're just going for this guy.
God save me and flay all you devils. <coughs> Blackbeard made you as good an offer as ever a man got from any pirate. He might curse his methods, but medicine was all he wanted. And now he'll get it. Uh huh. You should have bothered, mate. He has returned, Captain. What's the take? Two crates. And the means for mixing additional doses. Uh, that's right thinking, precious little of that these days. You hear that, Mr. Rax? My young friend returns with offerings and so saves your scrawny neck. Will you not thank him? <laughs> you should quit these waters, Thatch. The governor, he's bound to muster more soldiers. You go on ahead. I, I got some business in the north. You're done, aren't you? Giving up on us. On NASA. Look, lad. I'm late into my fourth decade on this earth. And if I don't find some means to make the fifth quiet and cozy voyage, I'd rather sink to the devil's doorstep than call myself captain. Another year. How will you meet again, lad? In this world? Or the one below? All right. We don't have any new messages. Um, so we have a work diary week two. Talked to Melanie Lemay about rewards and bonuses. Visited Oliver Gagne's uh, in his office. He asked me to prioritize Edward's search for something called Observatory. Was contacted by John from IT. He asked me to access the colleague's computer and recover a video file for him. I delivered this video file, strange autopsy video, to a courier named Rebecca in the library. I also noticed the barista was a bit of a dandy, uh, a bit annoying. So far, so good. A really productive week. Those are all stuff we've read. And that was the end of it. I can't be responsible for other Three people's incompetence between the parking garage and my desk. Yeah. Over here. Are you ready? He's waiting for us. Sure, let's go. I just watched some of your footage from this week. It's amazing. Blackbeard was mental. And we all got so excited that we started talking about this idea for a trailer about him. Maybe start with him drinking, talking to some pirates, telling a story. <laughs> Loading screen. Then? We cut to him leaping across the deck of his boat and, sorry, his ship, not boat, but jumping around the deck of his ship, swinging from ropes and fighting like a devil. I mean, obviously we're gonna have to manipulate some of the existing footage to get it looking good, but it could be great. I'm getting a shiver in my timbers just thinking about it. <laughs> sorry. I hope we're not late. No, you can go right. Hi, Melania. So you just walked in. I need a few minutes with you alone. Leticia is on the phone and we're discussing the Kenway project. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry about this. I'll call you when we're ready. Shouldn't be long. Hello? Hello? Do you have a second? Of course you do. Head to the waypoint on your map. I have another job for you. I'd like to link all the cameras in the building to a central monitoring system, but most aren't calibrated correctly. Okay. So he wants us to go down here. Another locked door. 
not a problem. Voila. You now have level two security clearance. Not bad for your first few weeks. Find the camera control station first. I'll have saved your communicator. Is there anything? There is a note there. We'll get that when we come back out, I think. Oh, this is an interesting security measure. It looks like you need to find the right combination of numbers to adjust the wave. Easy Target enough, is right? 70. Pick a number selector, then change its value. Once you find the right combination of numbers, you should get access. Oh, I see. Okay. So does it multiply? It does multiply. Okay. So we want like two, five, and seven. We just forget about me. We do as the lady says. Focus on the observatory. Assassins, Templars, crazy talk. I'm curious about this shareholders meeting, though. How about you break into Olivier's office and see if you can find his schedule? Oh, what? You don't like that idea? Well, how about I blow the fucking whistle on you, hacker? I own you. <laughs> what I mean is, I don't want to ruin your life, so do as I say. Now, step over to the window. All right, let's pick this up first. We have another note here, number nine. Admit them and submit to them. Yes, we submit that we by that by being ourselves the product of the advanced yet earthbound race of intelligent humanoids. We must also therefore be tools ourselves and subject to the tenets and purposes of our creators, despite our limited agency. Keep an eye out for more sticky notes while we're at it. see anything you can't waltz into Olivier's office through the front door so I've opened another route up we go did you know that Abstergo was run by Templars oh yeah sounds like crackpot stuff I know but then again the moon landing was fake right so anything's possible Either you walk through that door or throw yourself off the terrace. Those are your options. There's nothing over here from the looks of it. Oh, well done, kiddo. Find his computer. Make it snappy. We're looking for the shareholders' meeting schedule. It's worth a lot of money to us. Now we've seen this one before. Just 
just need to make our way across. Uh, to Melanie Lomay, uh, Tamara Naran, Chloe Lindsley, Christopher Darvin, Evan Du from All You Got Near. Um, date is 6 November 2013. Uh, salute. Uh, as most of you know, I'll be attending the Chicago stakeholders meeting, our shareholders meeting from the 15th to the 17th, and they'll want to see our progress with the Kinway line. The small amount of data we have already gathered is incredible, and we anticipate even more amazing finds in the near future. The events and people we have seen so far make us confident that the complete experience will be one of the most eye-opening explorations of piracy ever seen. It will take quite a bit of work to scrub the data of objectionable and classified material, but once we have, um, we have already have some incredibly promising footage. At the same time, it's Stargate Entertainment. Uh, this is long. Uh, we'll soon be announcing a closed beta for our new consumer cloud interface app, Sexy Name Force Coming. Edward Kinway's virtual private experience will be the first complete product on offer and the first of its kind anywhere. An immersive interactive pirate experience drawn from actual historical data. Internal tests of our consumer cloud app have been encouraging and we anticipate it will, all, it will be ready in time for the next holiday season if everything goes according to plan. Uh, so this leads us to a broader question. What other experiences would we like to offer? What other historical periods and locations can we explore? Judging by our current uh, rate of data retrieval, our capacity to produce and our understanding of consumption trends, executives at Extergo and um, indices have given me the goal of producing one complete virtual experience per uh, annum, uh, in addition to smaller offerings, as research allows. Uh, this includes books, recordings, films, and other transmedia offerings. The second uh, related question is this. Does Sentinel 17 contain enough compelling data to sustain our current commitment to it? Or should we make the request to Abstergo Industries for additional archive data? Remember that data from Sample 1 proved fruitful enough uh, to create our liberation product? It's very likely that research in the samples 2 through 16 will bear surprising fruits as well. Thoughts, Olivier, Olivier Gagne. Um, to these people from Melanie, a subject already po um, responsive possible locations. Hello all. Uh, thanks for opening the discussion. Uh, Olivier, uh, just a brief heads up. This is with where we stand now. I've been the Sample 70 project director for just over a year now, and my team and I have been able to cobble to get, um, together a rough list of the most interacting time period, interesting time periods available to us through this simple genetic sample. Remember, this uh, is data that has already been fully and partially sequenced by Abstergo Industries. I'll try to be brief. Um, the patrilineal. So the father line, 1563 Italian Renaissance, 16th century Ottoman Empire, 18th century American colonies, war for independence, 19th century New England and American Midwest, uh, the mother's line, 12th century Holy Land and Crusades, 13th century Egypt and Northern Africa, 14th century Ashikaga Shogunate in Japan, 18th century French Revolution, 19th century Napoleonic Wars, Taiwan, 20th century Summer of Love, American Pacific Coast. Obviously, this is just a small sample of the potential options. The number of ancestors any one person uh, has is well above 30,000 after just 15 generations. So there could be many more surprises waiting for us within, the samples, within sample 17. However, despite sample 17's risk heritage, we should not limit ourselves to this alone if we have uh, concrete leads elsewhere. For instance, quite a few men from all sides of my family fought in both world wars, and I even have a great 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 father who fought in the American Civil War. Um, managed to meet President Lincoln a few times. Going this route is a little more costly and time-consuming since the data has not already been sequenced, uh, but it could be rewarding in the long run. In short, if anyone has confirmed any... Uh, connections to interesting historical events periods or cities or knows of people who do please share i will also be reviewing the past three decades of samples collected and sequenced by abstergo industries i recently learned that one of their samples number two i believe uh, has participated in the trial of john uh, de arc uh, so joan of arc uh there is so there's another nice leave right there now so nice pictures here Uh, so this is from uh, Olivier. 
All good points, Mel. A word of caution, though. Sample 2 comes from the late Dr. Warren Vidic himself, collected at some point in the early 80s when he was a younger engineer working at Abstergo Industries. So as tempting as the Jean d'Arc experience sounds, I'm not sure Abstergo Industries uh, would be too keen on letting us rummage around in Dr. Vidic's DNA. It's just a sensitive topic. Uh, for my own part, I related to Francois Xavier Gondot. Oh, sorry. Noted uh, Quebecois historian and poet. Exciting, right? Possible lead. One additional caveat. Let's avoid digging into any modern periods, uh, for example, the 20th century, unless we find something incredibly compelling. Because as fun as World War II might sound, we do well to avoid any uh, settings with vehicles, cars, motorcycles, helicopters, tanks, etc. Why, you may ask? Because our research has shown that the memory imprinting in individuals is actually hampered by the semi catechotic state most people enter when driving for medium and long periods of time. And this makes data retrieval somewhat more difficult. Uh, in short, we don't want to go through the effort of coding extra animus features just for the sake of digging up memories of people driving around in cars. There are other and more efficient ways to experience that. So this is from Chloe Lesney. Um, Olivier, haha, Quebec City is beautiful, uh, but without pirates, ninjas, or zombies, I'm not sure how well a story about a historian would sell. Um, also keep in mind, samples 4 and 16 might be off limits too. While doing my own research last month, I caught one of some exciting characters uh, buried in these gene samples. But as soon as I started digging, I was told by uh, people far, far above me to stop. Uh, very odd, but not surprising, I suppose. AE has a lot of active military contracts, and I assume that these had something to do with that. I didn't push back. As far as my uh, oh, and if anyone's interested, my great-grandfather was friends with Hemingway and Stein and Sadie and Picasso when they lived in Paris in the 1920s. No action back in pictures there, but historically interesting. Just throwing that out there. P.S. Chris, is our lunch meeting on site or off? Um, Olivier. Um, yes, as much as I love the lost generation, I think for... Uh, I think our first few virtual experiences will need to be a little more action oriented. So wars and major uh, combat experiences are always a good st starting point or any periods of intense conflict conflict really as for pirates and ninjas and zombies. We could easily accommodate the first two, but zombies are a bit, how would you say a historical too bad? Really? Uh, this is from Christopher Darby. My great grandmother, for instance, worked alongside Amon de Valera and Michael Collins for many years during the Irish War for Independence, so it would be difficult to sequence that small segment of my own genetic memories for our purposes. Uh, Olivier, actually, there is factual basis for zombies or zombification anyway. Read Hurston's book on Haiti uh, and the strange voodoo practice there. It may not be Hollywood style zombie magic, but it's creepy nonetheless. In Liberation, Aveline came into contact with voodoo uh, hungans. If we dug further into that, I wonder if we could find what we could find. Her mentor, Agate, was into some weird stuff. Kale, off-site. There's a new vegetarian place I want to try. I'll bring the spec sheet. They're already printed. This is from uh, Kama. Uh, sorry to be a dissenter, but couldn't we bring this technology to educate, not place it? I mean, theoretically, we, ha we all have a human history to explore, all of our achievements and brightest moments. So it's a little disheartening to hear we need to focus on wars and conflicts and violence it's not that i'm against violence per se it's just that violence isn't terribly interesting in bulk that's all there's so much more nuance to life that we could explore i'm sorry let me get back down to where i was because i just closed that um there's so much more nuance to life and thing i think we could explore that so what if we found the memories of someone who worked with Albert Einstein in his patent office or Charles Darwin on the Beagle or Marie Curie in France, moments where humans showed their very best potential? And this is from Evan Dean. Okay, come on. Until oily, humorous university professors start paying us eight-figure fees to research the uh, rification. I don't even know what that word is. Um uh, normative gender signifiers and pre-colonial india why don't we stick to shit that sells i'm talking jack the ripper of victorian london i'm talking about guillotines um robespierre and napoleon bonaparte uh, in the french revolution i'm talking about billy the kid and why Earp in the wild american west i'm talking about genghis khan and the mongols killing a city of millions in the span of a long summer weekend action blood adventure conflict because we're not um 
and going to uh, earn back one tenth of the money we have poured into this re, uh, reliving the memories of the guy who sat next to Einstein as he bit his nails while working out the finer details of general relativity in his head. For F's sake, man, this is a business, not a group therapy session. Uh, from Olivier. Uh, Evan, let's take this offline. OG. All right, so that's that's the rest of that. You sneaky bastard. A pirate through and through, ain't you? Now, get down to the lobby. There's a courier waiting. Yeah, that's right. I've been planning this for a few hours. Now, wait. The receptionist. Hold on. I'll try something. As gullible as ever. Can hack our computer now, as we go by, can't lobby. I? Before I remotely detonate your earpiece. <laughs> Easy enough. Assassin's Creed Black Flag poster. Uh, Oliver Bowden, Chapter 3. Uh, she was in the Old Shillelagh, a tavern halfway between uh, Heatherden and Bristol, a regular haunt of mine. And sometimes in the summer, when uh, mother and father toiled over the shearing at home, uh, when I'd have to uh, make more regular trips into town than several times a day. Uh, I admit I hadn't taken much notice of her at first, which is unusual for me because I like to pride myself on knowing the exact location of any pretty woman nearabouts. And besides, the shillelagh uh, wasn't exactly the sort of place he expected to find a pretty woman. A woman, yes, a certain type of woman. But this girl I could see wasn't like that. She was young, about my age, and she wore a fine linen coif and a smock. Looked to me like a domestic. Uh, but what made me aware of her wasn't her clothes. It was the loudness of her voice, which was quite in contrast to the way she looked. She was sitting with three men, all of them older than her, who I recognize at once. Tom Cobley, his brother Seth, and Julian Somebody, whose surname escaped me, but who worked with them. Three men with whom I had traded words, if not blows, before. Uh, the kind who looked down their noses at me because they thought I looked uh, down my nose at them. Who liked me no more than I liked them, which was not a lot. They sat forward on their stools and watched this young girl with leering, wolfish eyes that betrayed a darker purpose, even though they were all smiles, begging on the table, encouraging uh, her as she drank dry a flagon of ale. No, she did not look uh, like one of the women who usually frequented the tavern, but it seemed that she was determined to act like one of them. The flagon was about as big as she was, and as she wiped her hand across her mouth and banged it to the table, the men responded with cheers, shouting for another one, and no doubt pleased to see her, wobbly, her wobble slightly on her stool. Uh, probably couldn't believe their luck, pretty little thing like that. I watched as they let the girl drink yet more ale with the same tumult accompanying her success, and then as she did the same as before, wiped her hand across her mouth, but with even a, a more pronounced wobble this time. Uh, I looked past between them, a look that seemed to say, the job is done. Tom and Juliet stood, uh, and they began in their words to escort her to the door, because you much too much to drink, my lively. Let's get you home, shall we? Uh, to bed, smirked Seth, uh, thinking he was saying it under his breath, even though the whole tavern heard him. Let's be getting you to bed. I passed uh, a look to the barman who dropped his eyes and used his apron to blow his nose. A customer sat at the bar from me, turned away as I appealed to him with my eyes. Bastards. Might as well uh, look to the cat for help, I thought. Then with a sigh, I banged my tankard, stepped off my stool, and followed the cobblers in into the road outside. I blinked as I stepped from the darkness of the tavern into the bright sunlight. Uh, my cart was there, roasting in the sun, beside it, another one that took uh, belonged to the cobblers. As on the other side of the road was the yard of a house uh, set far back, no sign of a, far of a farmer. 
We were alone on the highway, just me, the two Cobway brothers, uh, Julian, and the girl, of course. Well, Tom Cobway, I said, uh, the things you see on a fine afternoon, why just you and your cronies are getting drunk and getting um, a poor, defenseless uh, young woman even drunker. The girl sagged as Tom clearly let go of her arm and turned to address me, his finger already raised. Now, you just stay out of this, Edward Kenway, you good uh, for nothing. You're as drunk as I am, and your morals just as loose. I don't need to be given a talking to by the likes of you. Seth and Julian had turned as well. The girl was glazed over like her mind had turned in uh, for the night, even if her body was still awake. Well, I smiled. Loose morals I might have, but Tom, Cl uh, Tom Clayley, but I don't need to pour ale down a girl's throat before taking her to bed. And I certainly don't need two friends to help me at the task. Tom Cobley reddened. Uh, why you cheeky little bastard you. I'm going to put her on my cart is what I'm going to do and take her home. I have no doubt. That's what you intend to, that you intend to put her on her cart and take her home. It's what you plan to do uh, between putting her on the cart and reaching home. That concerns me. That concerns you, does it? A broken nose and a couple of broken ribs will be concerning you unless uh, you mind your own bloody business. Squinting at the highway where trees bordering the dirt uh, track shone gold and green in the sun and in the distance was a lone figure on a horseman, shimmering and indistinct. I took a step forward and if there had been any warmth or humor in my manner, it disappeared now, almost uh, of its own accord. There was a steeliness uh, in my voice when I next spoke. Now you just uh, leave that girl alone, Com Tom Cobley, or I won't be responsible for my actions. The three men looked at one another uh, in a way they'd done. In a way they'd done as I asked. They let go of the girl, and she seemed almost relieved to slide to her haunches, placing one hand on the ground, and looking at us with bleary eyes, evidently oblivious to all that was being discussed on her behalf. Meanwhile, I looked at the Cobblaze and uh, weighed up the odds. Had I ever fought three at once? Well, no, because if you were fighting three at once, you weren't uh, so much fighting. You were getting beaten up. But come on, Edward Kenway, I told myself. Yes, on one hand, it was three men, but one of them was Tom Cobblay, who was no spring chicken, about my father's age. Another one was Seth Cobblay, uh, who was Tom Cobblay's son. And if you can imagine the kind of person who would help his father get a young girl drunk, well, then you can imagine that sort of person was Seth Cobblay was. Uh, which was to say a maggoty underhand type, more likely to run away from a fight with wet breeches and stand his ground. And what's more, they were drunk. On the other hand, I was drunk too. Plus, they had Julian, who, going on looks alone, which is all I had, could handle himself. But I had another idea. That lone rider I could see in the distance. If I could just hold off the cobblers till he arrived, the odds were likely to shift back in my favor. After all, if he was of good character, the lone rider was bound to stop and help me out. Uh, well, Tom Cobble, I said, you've got the advantage over me. That's obvious for anyone to see. But, you know, I wouldn't. Uh, be able to look my mother in the eye knowing I let you and your cronies abduct this pretty young thing. I glanced up the road to where the lone rider uh, was getting closer. Come on, then, I thought. Don't hang about. So I continued, even if you end up leaving me in a bloody heap by the side of the road and carry the young lassie off anyway, I'm going to have to do all that I can to make it as difficult for you as possible. And perhaps see to it that you go on your way with a black eye and maybe a pair of throbbing bollocks for your troubles. Tom Cobbley spat, uh, then gazed at me through wide and slutty eyes. Well, are you just going to stand about there talking all day, Edward Kenway? Or are you going to attend to your task? Because time waits for no man, he grinned an evil grin. I've got people to see, things to do. Hi, that's right. The longer you leave it, the more of a chance the poor lassie has to sobering up, eh? I don't mind telling you I'm getting tired of all this talk, Kenway. He turned to Julian. How about we teach this little bastard a lesson? Oh, and one more thing before we start, Master Kenway. Uh, you ain't fit to shine your mother's shoes, you understand? Uh, that hit me hard, I don't mind admitting. Having someone like Tom Cobley, who had all the morals of a frothing dog and about half the intelligence, able to reach into my soul and, if my guilt was an open wound, then stick his thumb in that open wound and cause me even more pain, well, it certainly firmed up my resolve, if nothing else. Julian pushed his chest forward and, with a snarl, advanced. Two steps away from me, he raised his fists, dipped his right shoulder, and swung. I don't know who Julian was used to, uh, and I don't know who Julian was used to fighting outside taverns, but somebody with less experience than me, that's for sure. 
uh, because I had already taken note of the fact that he was right-handed and he couldn't have made his intentions more obvious if he tried. The dirt rose in clouds around my feet as I dodged easily and brought my own right up sharply. He shouted in his pain as I caught him under the jaw, and if it had just been him, the battle would have been won. But Tom Cobway was already upon me. I just saw him out of the corner of my eye. It was too late to react, and I was dazed by a fist that slammed into my temple. I staggered slightly as I turned to beat the attack, and my fists were swinging much more wildly than I liked. I was hoping to land a lucky blow, needing to put at least one of the men down to even up the numbers, but none of my punches made contact as Tom Cobbley retreated, plus Julian had recovered from my first punch with alarming speed and now came at me again. He swung and his right hand connected with my chin, spinning me up, uh, about so that I lost my balance. My hat fell off, my hair was in my eyes, and I was in disarray. And guess who came in uh, with his boots kicking? That worm Seth Cobbley, shouting encouragement to his father and Julian at the same time. And the little bastard was lucky. His boot caught me in the midriff, and already off balance, I lost my footing and fell. Uh, the worst thing you can do in a fight against three me is fall. Once you fall, it's over. Uh, through their legs, I saw the lone rider up the highway, and now my only chance at salvation, possibly my only hope of getting out of this alive. But what I saw made my heart sink. Not a man on a horse, a tradesman, who would dismount and come rushing to my aid. No, the lone rider was a woman. She was riding astride the horse, not side saddle, but even uh, though was la lady. She wore a bonnet, a lightly colored summery dress, and the last thing I thought before Cobbley's boots obscured my view and the kicks came right again uh, was that she was beautiful. But beauty wasn't going to save me now. Hey, I heard, uh, you th three men, stop what you're doing right now. They turned to look up at her and remove their hats, sh uh, shuffling in line, uh, in line to hide the side of me, who lay coughing on the ground. What's going on here? She demanded to know. From the sound of her voice, I could tell she was young and, while not highly born, definitely well-bred. Too well-bred, surely, to be riding unaccompanied. Uh, we were just teaching this young man some manners, rasped Tom Cobbley out of breath. Exhausting business. It was kicking me half to death. Well, it doesn't take three of you to do that, does it? She replied. I can see her now, twice as beautiful as I first thought, as she glowered at the cobblaze. Her further part looked thoroughly mollified. She dismounted. More to the point, what are you doing with this young lady here? Pointing at the girl, who sat dazed and drunk on the ground. Oh, ma'am, this is a young friend of ours who has had way too much to drink. The lady darkened. She is most certainly not uh, your young friend. She is a maidservant, and if I don't get her back home before my mother discovers that she's absconded, then she will be uh, an unemployed maidservant. She looked pointedly from one man to the next. Uh, I know you men, and I think I know exactly what has been going on here. Now, you will leave this young man alone and be on your way before I am of a mind to take this further. Which much uh, bowing and scraping the cowboys clambered about their cart and were soon gone meanwhile the woman dismounted and uh, dismounted and knelt down to speak to me my name is caroline scott my family lives in hawkins lane in bristol let me take you back there and i can tend to your wounds i cannot my lady i said sitting up and trying to manage a grin i have work to do she stood i see and did i assess the situation correctly i picked up my hat and began to brush the dirt from it it was even more battered now you did my lady then I owe you my thanks, and so will Rose when she sobers up. She's a willful girl, not always the easiest to staff, but nonetheless, I don't want to see her suffer her uh, for her impetuousness. She was an angel. I decided then, uh, as I helped them mount the horse, Caroline uh, holding on the Rose, who lolled drunkly over the neck of the horse, I had a sudden thought. Can I see you again, my lady? Uh, to thank you properly when, uh, when my... The thank you properly, when my win, I look a little more presentable, perhaps. She gave me a regretful look. I fear my father would not approve, she said, and with that, uh, shook the reins and left. That night, I sat beneath the thatch of our cottage, staring out over the pastures as the sun went down. Usually, my thoughts would concern either the possibility of, of escape or wrestling with the inevitability of my future. And that night, I thought of Caroline, Caroline Scott of Hawkins Lane. Don't even think about ratting me out. My tracks are covered. Yours ain't. Alright, so down to the lobby we go. I think you pulled it a little too long. Oh, come on. It's not encrypted. 
printed code, for God's sakes. It's just a bloody copy. Oh, hooray! It's our old friend. Hey there, I just got a call about picking up another transfer. Oh? You said you were here to see me. Yes, that is one of the perks. Let's see it. Hmm. A conference in Chicago. Very nice. Thanks for this. We'll be in touch. Go, Rebecca. Text me. Stuff it, Hastings. They know what they're doing. Well done, friend. Very well done. Apologies for my temper tantrum there. You are with the good guys, I promise. We'll keep you safe. Trust me. Go on back to work. We'll be in touch. So he wants us to go back to work. There's our files. If I go back in here, um, I have another message. Security team, security warning. Due to recent data leak, new security measures will be installed. Please remember to follow all guidelines concerning your communicator uh, cubicle and always honor and respect your NDA. Support team, window cleaners. Um, attention. Throughout the week, window cleaners will be active outside the building on all floors. Please extra, uh, care to maintain confidentiality of your research and report any anomalous behavior to security or manager. Support team, reach us departures. Um... A number of colonies have recently accepted voluntary separation packages or transfers to other subsidiaries of Circo Industries. Please wish a warm goodbye to Sarah Young, uh, Scout Smester, and Chloe Lesney. Bon voyage. Um, Evan Dean, what we know. Uh, ever notice the weird vibe in this place? I'm serious. It's not all sushi and lattes. I think we had to leave our old office because it was haunted. No, seriously, though. Why does a company that's only two years old have the resources for an office this size, not to mention an aquarium and elevator? That's some sensible spending right there. Uh, and, oh, party like it's 1980. I was just out for a walk in the atrium and I gotta ask, have you noticed all the cameras in this place? Like, why do they need to watch us so closely? We're making games for crying out loud, not weapons or something. What's your take on all this? John from IT, communicator updated. Hey there, I tweaked your communicator a bit. You can now take a peek around the building using the security, uh, s security system cameras. Be sensible with this new power. Nothing more in the diary. This is our mission log. We have 11 out of 20 sticky notes. We have seven out of uh, 33 computers hacked. Corporate pressure. Well, it's week uh, week three and all as well. At Olivia's request, I, I should be searching Edward Kidway's baby for the observatory, but John from IT continues to pass to me about menial tasks. Melanie seems optimistic about the whole project. Okay. That all is normal stuff. All right, so I think we're going to call this episode here for today. We will explore more around uh, with our level two security clearance next week. So we do hope you all enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.